Hello everyone, welcome back to our YouTube channel, Linux Tuition. Uh, we are continuing our web series, AWS for Developers. Uh, in this video, we're gonna kind of cover uh, Amazon RDS setup. And we will see how we, can, how we can set up Amazon RDS in AWS. Let's understand the first use case. Uh, Amazon RDS is the managed uh, services for relational database like MySQL, uh, Postgres, and MSSQL, and other uh, SQL databases. In previous days, so what we do actually in order to set up the database, we set up, set up a VM and we set up a um, database on it and we set up the standby instances, we take up backups of our databases, we also do a lot of uh, administrative efforts uh, in order to make our production level databases. Uh, but in the, in modern days, uh, it, uh, there are a lot of cloud providers actually uh, giving you a solution for managed database instances. Uh, this means you won't you don't need to worry about the database setups uh, database uh, uh, backups database high availability disaster recovery and different kind of stuff what only you need to figure out uh, your development so this will gives you a lot of ease to um, do more focus on development instead of infrastructure management amazon rds is the same and it gives you ability and flexibility to do such administrative uh, administrative efforts on just few clicks so let's see what is amazon rds and what are the features so this is the amazon rds if you don't need uh, don't know how to come from you need to just log into your aws management console type rds and you will be seeing this option and this will be enough and you will be redirected to this dashboard so uh, this is the resource dashboard which actually you already provisioned and you can monitor um, like uh, db instances db cluster parameter groups and everything so in order to create your rds instance first understand this dashboard so that in the database tab you will see all the database you or you created and you are running uh, then you have a performance insight and query editor query editor is the option where you can run and connect, connect and run your queries to your databases directly this will lead to use your administrative credentials then we have a performance insight you can see what's running around your inside uh, of your database so you can find out all the events from performance insight a snapshot is the option where you can take backups and see what are the backups already taken you can export in Amazon S3 as well from you where there you can utilize to anywhere the, uh, from this option you can schedule backups uh, from here you can you can uh, purchase reserved instances and see what are the reserved instance already purchased uh, this option is gives you ability to proxy your request to your database instances uh, the way we do proxying uh, with our nginx and other so it's it's a little difficult to understand at the moment but we will see how we can do that and then this is the, the this is the configurational part uh, in order to set up your amazon rds or database uh, you can you need to see these option as well subnet group uh, is the um, is actually create a logical uh, batch of your all subnets where you like to provision your rds instance like say if you wanted to provision your in, uh, db instance in the private subnets or in the db subnets we first the first step is to create a subnet group and you you need to combine all those private subnet uh, which uh, where you actually wanted to provision the first thing uh, we would like to highlight over here in order to create multi az cluster you at least need three subnets if you if you willing to provision your instance in public or exposed to, to, to the public which is not recommended you need to create a, pub, a subnet group for three public uh, subnets if you wanted to provision a db instance in the private zone you need to create a subnet group for three at least three private zone you can use more but minimum requirement is three then we have a parameters group parameters group is more like a con uh, rds configuration like uh, engine values global variables global parameters and th these are more aligned towards the database configuration then we have uh, option groups and custom engine version let's do how we can set up the db instance so for this the first step is we need to create a subnet group uh, in order to click uh, click on the subnet group and click on the create db subnet group you can say qa db subnet 
test 01 and for the sake of description we just copying a paste now we need to select our vpc in the vpc we need to choose our availability zone uh, where you actually want to provision the main requirement for cluster is three availability zone now you need to choose the vpc subnet so the private subnets are the first private subnet is 128 this one is the private subnet then we have another private subnet which is 144 144 then we have a third private subnet which is 160 uh, and this is the 160 so we have chosen the three private subnets that means we our uh, db instance will going to be launched in the private subnets if you have db subnets and you already identified the way i identifying so you can do the same click on the create button so we have our db subnets ready next thing is we need to go to and uh, go and create our db instance so just click on the create button so uh, the database engine types these are the six you can create mariadb you can sql you can aurora you can postgres you can create oracle and MSSQL. these are the six engines currently for sql amazon rds does support and uh, you can uh, you can enable or if you are setting up aurora so you can uh, select the engine addition for mysql compatible and postgres compatible mysql aurora is the amazon uh, native uh, developed rds instance that actually gives you a lot of more option than our legacy databases like mysql maria and postgres and oracle and these sql databases so at the moment we are not going to set up uh, aurora at the moment so we are going to going with mysql and the engine version we are choosing 8 or 8.30 uh, at the moment we are going with 8.02 uh, then uh, we need to see what kind of template we need the free tier is the one which actually creates a single instance with no availability and no ad, uh, no advanced features like uh, uh, if you wanted to uh, set up a production so you can set up a production template and this will give you a multi azdb instance and multi db and it, it gives you a lot of high availability features uh, where you can you can't find on free tier and dev test so uh, we can set up a production dev uh, when uh, we need to set up a dev test instance you can set up so uh, we are setting up a production now the availability durability perspective single instance create a single db instance with no standby instances that means if you if you set up a db instance in one availability zone and that goes down so you won't be able to recover multi easy db means uh, you have one instance in one availability zone and the standby instance in the different availability zone so in case one availability zone got failed you will you would be able to recover from the other availability zone uh, using a standby db instance but the fact is you won't be able to use the standby instance for read workloads since it's just a standby instance it only come into the action when your prime d got failed multi easy db cluster uh, it will gives you uh, db2 instance uh, you can use one for writer instance one code one for reader instance or you can set up multiple reader instance as well so uh, and it's set up uh, in different availability zone as well uh, in the setting tab this is the db identifier you could name it as you want uh, then you have a credentials uh, you can choose any credential best admin then you can use the auto generate but we are using our own password this is the instance configuration like uh, wh what type of memory what type of cpu you required uh, even you can use the burstable categories which is dvt32 medium and uh, you can use the small instances as well uh, for cluster uh, for multi az db instance you can you could use but whenever you are using the multi az db cluster you won't be able to use the burstable category so if you are planning to use production 
uh, template for bustable you won't be able to use if if your uh, if your production has less workload so you could choose the, choose the dev test from there or, or maybe free tier or where you can uh, sorry for dev test so you would be able to see the bustable category so at the moment we are going with standard m class so we are using four uh, four sorry this one uh, db5 uh, m5d large it has four two vcpu 8 gb of ram and it has 75 gb of instances store uh, we can we can enable the auto scaling later on so this is the iops uh, we can choose our ssd provision uh, so here from here we can define our storage capacity provisioned iops and everything and now we need to set up a our network configuration if you would like to connect to a ec2 instance you can direct connect directly connect from here but at the moment we are not uh, considering that one we are just generically setting up our rds instance so we need to choose our vpc from here uh, we are choosing development vpc and then we need to see it's like the uh, db subnet group so we already created one db subnet group now this is the expose how we would like to expose our rds instance since we already decided and discussed we would like to continue to uh, limit our database in the private zone so we won't be able to publish them as a public access now this is the firewall security so uh, we can say uh, we would like to create a new uh, security group vsg allowed dash db so it will create a security group and add all the relevant rules then we have a performance insight in the performance insight if you would like to enable the performance insight, we can turn it from here but uh, we are not doing it at this moment uh, from here we can we can choose the db parameter that we created earlier or if you don't create so you can create a new db parameter and we can from here parameter group and from the parameter group we can click we can create from here uh, parameter group is a configuration that we just discussed what is parameter group we can create uh, very easily and quickly click the parameter and now from here we need to select the class since we decided uh, we are going with the uh, mysql 8.0 so we are choosing this and the db parameter group uh, since we are setting up db cluster i believe let me just go back yes we are we we are creating clusters and we can say uh, qa test db um, group and we can just say save click on the create so from here we can we can just navigate back and from in the additional configuration uh, our uh, db subnet group, group will be listing uh, it's not listing because i haven't refreshed if i refreshed everything i have done right above it will be gone so uh, if you already created it will be start listing if not listing uh, you need to do all the steps again so i'm not in uh, uh, mode to do it again so i'm just leaving it as default but uh, I already showed how you can create. Uh, here you can define the backup retention. Like uh, if you wanted to create a three days backup, seven days backup, you can choose it from here. Even you can choose the specific window where you want to initiate the backup. Uh, you can enable the backup uh, using AWS KMS. Uh, so your backup will be encrypted. Uh, you can export the logs of audit, error, journal, and pseudo query logs. We are not uh, exporting any logs so you can define the maintenance window uh, or you can choose a window so uh, even uh, if you wanted to delete protection like if you if you are setting up your production database it is highly recommended to check this box so no one can accidentally delete your rdb instance so just click on the create button once this is done your database provisioning will be start so you see uh, it creates a database and three read in reader instances so whatever the read uh, calls you can define on these three instances and all the writing calls will be defined to this instance so this will take a, a, a very long time to provision 
uh, once you click over here so you will see endpoints for databases uh, this is the reader endpoint this is the writer endpoint uh, even you wanted to click if you wanted to create a proxy you can define but don't do that at the moment we are not doing uh, and then uh, this is the CloudWatch monitoring. You can see the CPU utilization, DB connection, free storage, and all, all the DB related parameters uh, and the monitoring uh, dashboards. So the, this database is created. You can find the log and event here. Uh, if you need to do, and if this is the configuration. Oh. So uh, from here, you can see the cluster configuration um it's multi az engine this this is the arn this is the resource id this is the credentials and all the all the relevant information if aws recommend anything you will it will be start listing over here so if you wanted to modify your database configuration like you wanted to add some parameters you can click just modify and you can do since our database is not provisioned yet so it is not in modifiable state but we have another rds instance already provisioned so we can go so this instance is already available for me for mod uh, modify modification purpose so let's say uh, i need to add some uh, configurational ch changes so what i do i just click on the modify button so i can do a lot of changes like if i would uh, if i'd like to change the db class or uh, if I would like to reset the password, so I can choose a reset the password from here. If I wanted to change the class, a class of the instance, we can, I can change it from here. Even I, if I wanted to enable the auto scaling of the storage or disable the auto scaling storage, let's say you, you, your data is unpredictable and it grows uh, unpredictably. So you can specify the storage or auto scaling. Let's say at the moment you have a 198 GB of a storage. So what it does this after enabling an auto storage, auto scaling uh, storage. So it will grow your storage automatically till 1000 GB. Uh, you can define the maximum threshold like this, but you have to pay a lot. So uh, you can choose all all the relevant information like you can choose the password you can choose the password authentication using i am and you can choose that you can change uh, a lot of configuration uh, so uh, that's how you can manage your databases i hope this video will help you a lot in our in terms of uh, learning the rds uh, so uh, if you wanted to provision your db instance in the public subnet you can create you just need to create a public subnet db group db uh, sub, uh, db subnet group in the public subnet and you would be able to provision it so how you would know your db instance is publicly available or not so you you could uh, you can go to your db instance and find this if your publicly accessible is no that means you won't be able to access your uh, db instance publicly even the db is in public subnets so i hope you like video if you like this video don't forget to subscribe our youtube channel and thank you for watching